Whether or not you lost money with FTX, if you've got crypto, you're probably worried about how it's being stored. The issue of custody is going to be one of the biggest of the year, and companies are already trying to offer innovative new solutions for our crypto wallets. So how can you store your crypto? Well, storage may be a bit of a misnomer as the blockchain stores all data and transactions. Storing the private keys for wallets is what's in question. And when it comes to that, there's a few options out there. The most popular way of storing has always been with an exchange, a centralized exchange, which typically may have offered you very attractive yields to do so. The drawback, as became painfully clear from FTX, is that you don't know how secure your funds are. And it turns out, in some cases, they weren't secure at all. Failures and scandals at places like Mt. Gox, Quadriga CX, and then FTX have all driven a rise in cold wallet storage. After the FTX scandal, data from Glassnode showed that Bitcoin was being moved to self-custody at historic rates. Now, self-custody essentially involves physically storing your crypto wallet on a drive that is not connected to the internet and that requires passcodes that are also kept offline. Joseph Tiesek from hardware wallet provider Trezor says that they offer the greatest amount of security. The hardware wallets, uh, they are never connected to the internet. Uh, all the operations related to private key generation, to signing the transactions, these happen in an offline environment. These exchanges or other custodians uh, can uh, fall uh, to hacks, uh, to mismanagement, to outright th uh, theft or fraud, which is what we've basically seen with uh, the FTX. According to a recent report from researchandmarkets.com, demand for hard wallets is expected to grow at an annual rate of about 26% for the next five years. We have more on that hard wallet growth in a recent episode, so make sure you check that out. There are still drawbacks to these wallets, though. You need to look after the passcodes, and those can be lost or accidentally destroyed. Cold storage also makes it harder to trade crypto. That's why bull runs have seen investors largely keeping their crypto on exchanges where they can trade it more quickly. The middle ground between these two extremes has been custodians, and they are essentially firms that secure funds against being misused or stolen. They're vital in traditional finance. They're a cornerstone, for instance, of the banking industry. And companies like Hextrust have been calling for a greater role of custodians in crypto since FTX. Colin Brooks from Hextrust recently told Forecast this is going to be vital. The reason why I think it's important for people to use a professional custodian is that if its entire activity or pretty much its entire activity is custody, it's not taking risks. So there's very little chance of it failing itself. Using a custodian for your crypto isn't straightforward for everyone though. Most custodians have largely focused on institutional investors or those with large holdings. The nature of crypto security and blockchain immutability also throws up potential hurdles. That's according to Nick Newman from private key management provider Casa. That worked in a system where you have reversible transactions, you have physical money that you want to protect with you know, large physical infrastructure and vaults. But as our world has gotten more digital as we've invented cryptocurrency, which has unique things like irreversible transactions, you start to see holes in the, in the custodian model. And this is where we get to the idea of innovation in crypto storage and security. As we collectively look at this trade-off between liquidity on the one hand and safety on the others, companies are trying to offer us alternatives. Now, CASA is one of those. It claims that it represents a better version of DeFi. So when you talk about liquidity and the ability to use your uh, fund, your money in trade or like actually trade to buy something or in trading on you know decentralized DEXs, decentralized exchanges, um, you can accomplish that through self custody just as simply as you could accomplish it through an exchange. And many times you can't even do it through an exchange. CASA's idea is essentially to try and offer customers both multiple types of storage with one provider. The way it works is similar to an online bank account. How much money do I want in my wallet to go spend today? And how much do I want in my savings account that's harder to, to move funds out of? 
And so these are these are models that we've already invented, and it's really about applying it in a very usable way to the crypto ecosystem. It is very different from, say, just having a single hardware wallet that you, you know, set up, and it's very different from having them your funds online on an exchange all the time. And so, yes, I think when when you look at it from that perspective, it is the third way, which. For, for us, is kind of like the the Goldilocks way, you might say, where hey, this is the best of both worlds here that gives people that security and that access and, and control when they want it. Other companies like Australia's Albyte are looking at non-custodial wallets as a way of mitigating risk in trading as well. But whatever new types of offering come to the market, one key choice still remains. Here's Alex Zinder from Ledger speaking to us recently. Where is your risk appetite for ease of use versus security? You know, how many assets do you have in your software wallet versus your hardware wallet? What can you trust somebody else to manage for you? All of this comes back to the issue of trust. In the aftermath of FTX, trust is missing from crypto. And however much risk you want to take in crypto, you still have to trust it in some form to be involved at all. If innovation in things like wallets and storage can help rebuild that trust, the whole sector is going to benefit. All right, that's it from us. Do like and subscribe to this video if you want to see more content like it and let us know your thoughts on what's happening with crypto, storage and with trust in the comments below or wherever you're watching this video.